Welcome back. You watch your morning live. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, more than a thousand post office workers downed tools yesterday despite a court order prohibiting them from doing so. Union said workers are unhappy about the alleged maladministration and corruption. Only 70% of their salaries were paid on the 25th of October and the rest three days later. I'm now joined by the Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services who joins us from our Pretoria studio, uh, Dr. Siabonga Twele. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Minister. Let's maybe start with a very obvious question despite the court order uh, that workers shouldn't down tools what in your opinion was the reason for the decision by workers and the unions yes we do understand the frustration of the workers but uh, what we don't want is the disruption of the postal service work uh, while we understand these concerns and alleged maladministration as you know we have an SIU who have been investigating these allegations they're finalizing their report, which will be submitted to the, to the president. And the president, after studying the report, would be able to give us the information where we need to act. As we have said before, if the report comes, we have to find that there's maladministration, we won't hesitate to take action to those uh, officials who are involved or in, the, in such maladministration. But however, the post office is a very important uh, source of uh, service delivery, particularly to the poor communities. With, that's why we call for the continued service of the post office without disruptions. Now, in 2014, the post office service was put under administration for financial reasons, and you've, you've already alluded to that. Um, what is the current financial status? Yes, we, the post office is still experiencing some uh, cash flow problems. That's why we're looking at the methods of how we can put uh, some cash injection into the post office. We're working with the Minister of Finance. Uh, we're working with the banks in terms of uh, funding the post office. Because we do have now a turnaround plan, and that turnaround plan requires some cash injection so that we can not just continue on cost-cutting measures, but we must invest in the measures which will increase the business of the post office. On the 25th, and we alluded to that in the intro before we started the interview with you, Minister, that um, uh, salaries or 70% of salaries were paid on the 25th of October and three days later, the rest. What was the reason for this? As I've said, uh, it was primarily the problem of the cash flows. Uh, the management alerted us very late that they were having these cash flows. We then mandated the management to engage the workers so that the workers can make necessary arrangements. But uh, when we realized that uh, the workers who were suffering because of the, this 70% payment, we then called the management and directed them that they should prioritize the payment of the workers. About two days ago, all the workers were paid the full amount. Minister, one of the other big issues has been a lack of permanent positions. Have this issue been resolved? Uh, as you know, we dissolved the board because it was dysfunctional uh, last year. And uh, in uh, August this year, with the approval of the cabinet, we appointed the board. What is critical now is that we don't have senior managers, the leadership. Uh, what is of priority for, for us is to appoint the CEO, the chief operations officer, because those are the people who actually drive this new vision and they turn around. Without those people who will share the same vision, of growing the post office and take the leadership, we will continue to face problems. That's why we are prioritizing that as a matter of agency, we are pushing the board to start all the processes of appointing the new CEO so that we can take it to cabinet for cabinet approval as soon as possible. Now, in 2014, that strike affected the economy. Uh, what will, and there were some serious financial losses then. What is the estimated financial loss uh, for this strike? It is very huge to the post office and, uh, and to the economy because most of the businesses rely on the postal office to do their businesses, particularly the, the mail order business. But it was also very costly to the workers. It was very costly to the post office. Some of the clients we lost in last year's strike, we have not managed to recover them. The revenues, because you must remember that when you are running a postal service like this network, you must increase the confidence and trust 
of the users that when they put their parcel, when they put their letters, they will reach the destination in time. So what we are, we are, we are focusing at now is to build, rebuild that confidence. And that's why it's become very critical that we appoint the leadership and the management of, this, of the post office who should take uh, uh, that, that business forward and engage the clients and engage the big and small clients so that we can have that trust again uh, that to the post office. And as you're talking about that, we also obviously are cognizant of the fact of how it affects the ordinary citizen uh, on the street. Minister, just in terms of just how it affects the ordinary person on the street. Yeah, as you know, the, as I've said, if you go to rural areas, the post office, you'll find that is uh, really the only interface with the government and uh, also interf only interface in terms of financial services. The poor people rely on the post office for their financial services. Uh, so when the disruptions are there, it affects them severely. When you talk about students, particularly the poor one, who are studying at universities using correspondence, they rely on the post office. So it affects them quite severely when there are disruptions or inefficiencies in the post office. So it is in that respect that we want the post office to be strong, to be efficient, to be able to deliver these services to the citizen at the most efficient manner. One of the other things that uh, you've, you've talked about, you've talked about um, hiring competent people, you've talked about restoring um, pride and, and reconnecting with, uh, with, with local businesses. Uh, talk to me about just some of the other resolutions, Minister, that you are working on and considering to make sure that we get everything back on track. Yes, as we have said, the, the first thing is to appoint the senior management. Secondly, we have to find, uh, make sure that these growth factors, whether it's it financial services, the corporatization of the post bank becomes very critical uh, because it also adds to the revenues of the post office. The other measures is to cut the, the uh, bad contracts which are affecting the post office, but it also to connect the post office to the network so that it can start engaging in, uh, in the new businesses like uh, electronic businesses and e-commerce. That's how other post offices are surviving in the world because the mail volumes continue to decline globally. So as mail volumes are declining, the post offices must diversify to new businesses. And that's where we want the new management and the board to focus on so that we grow the business of the, of the, of the post office. And not focusing on just cutting jobs and cutting costs, but on growing the business so that the workers can have a confidence that there's a future in their organization, the post office. The other thing that you must be aware of, Minister, is the talk around a government intervention. Uh, is that on the cards? Is that likely? Is that something you would consider? We, as I've said, we are in constant engagement with the Deputy President, the Minister of Finance, to find some intervention in terms of uh, making sure that we, 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 as a shareholder, put some cash injection. We must capitalize the post office. We, it needs capitalization because if you don't capitalize, all these new things we are talking about, they remain just a pipe dream. So it becomes very critical. Those are the measures we are engaging with it under the leadership of Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa, working together with the Minister of Finance to find creative ways to actually fund the turnaround of the post office. Do you have a commitment, sir? Yes, we do have a commitment. Just later this morning, I'll be meeting the Deputy President. The challenge is we are trying to follow the prescripts of the law, but we are working very close with the National Treasury to find the adequate, some, some funding of the post office so that it can be able to move forward. Now, today is a pretty big day. It's the launch of the Cybersecurity Hub. And for many South Africans, for the very first time this morning, they'll hear those three words. What is the Cybersecurity Hub? The Cybersecurity Hub is a very important platform. As you know, the, the South Africans are using the World Wide Web and Internet uh, uh, almost every day. The, the utilization of the Internet is increasing every day, and that's a very powerful tool. We're encouraging the people to use it so for their social economic development. And uh, it is a tool which connects the world. So as we connect to this tool, which is very empowering, 
we must also make sure and increase the confidence of the South Africans, both business, big and small, and civil society, that as they continue to use this powerful tool, they can do that with confidence that their personal information, that their network won't be put down, their personal information will also be protected. So the hub is the interface between South Africans and the government where we'll be able to advise them when they meet glitches, for instance, in their website, uh, in their social media usage, because some of these of the bad guys uh, have got a tendency to try and get into your website, put it down, or get into your website, steal information. So this is a platform for South African to interact through government because it's, it's expensive if we individually all try and protect ourselves in this, in, in this internet. The hub will be monitoring the incense, incidences globally of attacks and be able to send the alerts to South Africans when you meet a problem, you will be able also to conduct the hub so that we can assist you to bring back, bring back your, 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 your website if your business has been hacked or is down. Mm. So that's why it is important that uh, it's an important historic event, which is in line with the cybersecurity framework which was passed by cabinet in uh, 2012. We'll be working very closely with the bank, the biz business, the small business in particular, the academics and the civil society to, yeah. to create this platform of interaction sure. so that we can assist people when they meet problems. Minister, thank you very much for your time joining us from our Pretoria studios. It is the Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Dr. Sebonga Tuele, talking to us uh, about uh, some uh, interesting things, including the postal strike that's currently underway. Okay, we take an ad break. Don't go anywhere.